I'm at the scene of one of the worst massacres uh, in Jewish history since the Holocaust. This is the Nova Music Festival, which was a peace festival, a place that people came from all over Israel to celebrate peace and to try to make peace with the people of Gaza. Most of the people who came here favored the two-state solution and peace with Gaza. And uh, close to 400 of them were murdered in cold blood um, uh, 6.30 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, when they were waking up uh, to sunrise to uh, sing music. Uh, Hamas came over the border and, and shot and killed uh, everybody they could get their hands on, uh, raped uh, women, uh, mutilated bodies. If you look around, these are all memorials to the young people who died here. This is, this is your children. This is your nephew and niece. This is your brother. This is uh, everybody. And uh, the world has so quickly forgotten and uh, has so quickly failed to understand what happens when you allow uh, terrorism uh, to prevail and to win. Uh, this is not only a memorial to the death of the Israelis who died here. This is a memorial to Western civilization and to, and to decency. These are just some of the young people, just look at their faces, young people who at 18, 19, 20 uh, were murdered, some of them raped, some of them beheaded, some of them, their bodies mutilated. They came here to sing, to listen to music, and to bring about peace, and the world so quickly forgets. Uh, this is a picture that should be seen by everyone in the world who supports Hamas, who marches for Hamas on college campuses. This is a display of how low the world has sunk uh, when it so quickly forgets. And so many people from organizations like the National Lawyers Guild, Amnesty International at Harvard, uh, support Hamas and support the murder of these people. This man, Guy, survived. He threw his body over another woman and saved her life. He was then wounded and captured and taken to Gaza. Everybody hopes he's still alive and maybe he'll be exchanged during the process of exchanging uh, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of murderers and terrorists who were convicted, many of them of crimes, uh, guilty people, exchanged for innocent people like Guy. Uh, it is so important for the world to keep the focus on Guy. These uh, young Hitler youth uh, that are marching on college campuses today for Hamas couldn't care less about the hostages, about the people who are being held under horrible, horrible circumstances. Some of them killed, some of them raped, um, but the world doesn't seem to care. They've forgotten so much about the hostages. We can never forget about the hostages. I will never forget about Guy uh, until he's released. I hope someday, soon, I'll be able to hug him and tell him that we saw his poster. Um, and I think everybody should join us in hoping for the safe return of all of all the hostages. This is Jenny, a young girl, who, uh, a young woman, who came to the festival just to hear uh, music. And uh, um, she was murdered um, by a Hamas. Uh, her life ended uh, just because she wanted to seek peace and seek music. And she is anybody's daughter, everybody's daughter. And, and yet people march on behalf of her killer. And who knows what else may have happened to her. Most of the stories will never be told because we don't know. Seven members of my family were kidnapped on October 7th and four others were murdered. Um, six of them came back in the operational pause and one, my cousin, is still held there 171 days. This is my aunt and uncle's house of Hello, which is the one on the right, and Shoshan. Um, they were here together with um, six other family members because of the bone day. Um, and the situation ended up being that seven of them were kidnapped into Gaza and 
one was murdered. Um, six of them happily came back after 50 plus days in captivity. Their pictures were here, but they're a bit too good for now. Um, these include a three-year-old, Yael, the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, and her brother, Nave, which is eight years old. And they're still... And they were there for 50 days. Oh, they're, they're free they're now. Back. How was how their psychological? Not very good. They talk about it. They even draw drawings of terrorists. Because they know how, how it looks because they were there. And it's hard to believe that they were inside Gaza for 50 plus days. It's unbelievable to me. 6.30 a.m. An alarming amount of alarms start going off. Um, my family, eight of them, come here. There was a bed here, actually, so there wasn't uh, much room in here. Um, first, they just hear sirens and rockets firing at us. Then they start to hear shooting, which is very unusual. And this is when they understand something is different this time. Um, they spent about four hours here, not going out, um, and understanding that something is wrong. When they realize, fr just from hearing, People are being bombed at their houses, in the safe rooms. So they understand they need to do something different. They understand that if they stay here, they're just going to be bombed. Um, Tal, my cousin, and Afshal, my uncle, decide to open the window right over here and start negotiating with the terrorists, which is unbelievable uh, as is. Um, so first they tell them there's women and children here. So the terrorists say, okay, Men go out, women and children stay in. That's the last time my family saw my uncle and my cousin. Um, about a month after we found out that my uncle was murdered and that my cousin was kidnapped. We also don't know why he was murdered and he was kidnapped. There wasn't any system, there wasn't any strategy. Um, they kidnapped also the women and children that were in this room. So seven of them were kidnapped, uh, including Yehel, a three-year-old girl and a then an eight-year-old boy together with her mom and their grandma. Um, and they were there for 50, 52 days in captivity. Now they're back home, but they don't have their dad and they need him as soon as possible. And this is why uh, I also want to say that we need to bring them home now. Tomorrow, today, yesterday, they need to be home. Um, and this is an unbelievable reality. We're here outside of Vivian Silver's house. She was a peace activist originally from Canada, but she moved here to Barrie and dedicated her life to work towards peace with the people of Gaza. And she was murdered in she her was, own home. Yes, that's right. Do we know the circumstances under which she was murdered? It took us about a month, even more, to recognize uh, her body. First, we thought she was kidnapped too. Um, after about a month, we uh, we were searching for remnants or anything that could identify uh, what happened to her. And in the safe room of her house, which was uh, full of about 40 centimeters of ashes, we found the remainder of her tooth, which told us she was actually murdered here and not kidnapped together. In most of the houses, um, they've been burned so that uh, we can't tell what exactly happened in each house. Um, they could have been shot and then burnt. They could have been burnt alive. Um, in some cases, we only found remnants from the body, and this is how we identified that they have been murdered. But yes, as you can see, they brought tires and gasoline, and they were very well prepared for that. Um, so that's why we can't tell for sure what happened, but we did find remnants of her body mm -hmm. in the safe room. But they weren't just trying to burn down the houses. They were trying to burn down the houses with the people with in the there. People this inside. was part of their murder plot. Yeah. And the thing is, they were very well prepared when coming here. But um, from the moment they came inside the houses or the kibbutzim, the, there wasn't any strategy. Anything you see, you kill. It doesn't matter who they are, kids, women, elderly, everyone. It didn't matter. My aunt that lives here um, actually founded a company, which uh, it's, it was an NGO company that the whole uh, purpose was it was to grow vegetables in Africa. Mm -hmm. They worked in Ethiopia, Rwanda, and Tanzania in order to help both the 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 
neutral side of the the situation and the economy side so they helped grow vegetables there so the economy will be better in Africa um, it's just another example of the people that were here and their purpose and what they wanted to do to the world so these were the best people in the world and Hamas didn't distinguish and probably they would prefer to kill people who wanted peace yeah. even more than they would prefer to kill others yes and the uh, it's crazy to see it that way because half of my childhood was here. We used to do picnics outside all the time and watch TV and cook all the time. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel? Unfortunately, I got used to the situation. It's mm -hmm. been 171 days and I can, I can see the reality now. First, I couldn't see. I wasn't here for about three months. It took mm -hmm. me three months to even get here. Um, and it's unbelievable and believable at the same time, because this is what happened. What do you think now when you see a house destroyed in Gaza or a devastation in Gaza? Um, I can't too, talk too much about politics, but I, uh, I can say that I do want peace. I think everyone mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the thing we need to, we as a society, I mean, need to work on the most, to mm -hmm. work towards peace and want it. And, are you optimistic that we can get peace with Hamas? I think we need to 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 split Hamas and the people of Gaza. Um, Hamas is a terror organization. I don't think we'll be convincing them anytime soon, but I think there are people in Gaza, and I think there is a solution. And I think the situation can be better and has to be better. Vivian was a good friend of mine. She was Canadian. She was a part of a group, Women for Peace, with Palestinian women. And we used to argue on a, for, on a daily basis. She would go to the, to the entrance to Gaza to get six peop sick people to get treated in Israel. On that day, apparently, she asked her younger son to call me to get out of the house. I didn't have a battery on my cell phone anymore, it was empty. I didn't know about it, and she was burned here to the ground. And I couldn't get near her house ever since. This is my first time I went in, mm -hmm. and nothing. Mm -hmm. And nothing. you wonder whether or not some of the people she saved and took to the hospitals may have participated in her murder. I'll tell you something else. People from the uh, Jihad Islami and the Hamas, well, people from Gaza, they had families there. Mm -hmm. Somebody raised them to become what they became. Yeah. And it's a bit hard for me to uh, forgive because this is not something that you do to people, especially if you get in with a heavy, well-equipped soldiers from the Hamas and they fought kids, old women, and every person in sight, they killed everybody as a, as a part of their uh, uh, way of punishing us. And as much as I'd like to uh, call it, it's not revenge what we are doing on the other side, but in order to survive in this part of the world, in the Middle East, in a way you need to uh, act the same. You can't be a Western in an Eastern region. You got to, otherwise, they, they treat it as, as, as weakness. So the way I see, not be from the revenge or punished, they need to understand what they did on that day, on the 7th. It's a tragic mistake as far as they're concerned. And whatever we do from then till today and on, I'm afraid, has to become from that point of view. Otherwise, we won't be able to survive here because everybody else is looking around on the other borders to see what's going to happen between us and the, and the Hamas. And then they will decide whether they're going to attack as well, or they say, well, we're not going to get involved with them. And since on the 7th, I was in the regular army 50 years ago, and I found myself doing the same thing again here. I had to decide whether I got stuck again, or I was blessed 
to be able to fight with a younger generation. To survive and do something with it, as positive as possible to our people. If possible, if they'll agree, we can have some sort of arrangement that both of us, both sides can be able to live here. And I don't see it yet. So here I am trying to tell people what we went through and hope that it's going to make a difference. It will. It will make a difference. Some decent people will understand. The indecent people who are marching for Hamas will never understand. They're a lost generation. And just like Hitler Youth was a lost generation, in 1933 and 1934, we have a lost generation, but we have to fight for the minds and hearts and souls of those people who still have an open mind. So thank you so much for sharing your grief and your memories of this wonderful woman. Thank you.